Hello, my wonderful friends. It's me. And before we get into this story, I'm going to apologize to those of you who listen to this on headphones or are especially good at hearing background noises. Uh, you're going to hear my air conditioner. It is exceptionally hot in Louisiana tonight, and it's also raining. So usually I use one that's disconnected in the other room, but uh, my dogs are in there, and I'm trying to keep them from getting into the office and making noise while I record. So I have to use this one. I know, it annoys some people, and I am really sorry about that. But, on the upside, we have a very, very interesting story tonight uh, from Reddit user OopsAllQueer. <laughs> I like your name, and I know you from YouTube. This is Foxy the Icy Pony Beard. Full disclosure, I remember hearing a little bit about this, uh from the comment, from the YouTube comment that started all this, and I've been excited to read this ever since you mentioned it. I had no idea you were going to finish it in the same day. <laughs> so, here we go, kids. I'm excited. Greetings, Uncle Moonhorse. Hi. And the Moon Cult. Oh, do I have quite the story for your viewing pleasure. Firstly, introductions. Hi, you may call me Oopsie. Hello. And they, them pronouns are acceptable. Okay. Also, sorry for formatting. I'm on mobile. Now, this story goes back quite a few years to when I was in high school and is about someone that I actively tried to avoid, but this wouldn't be as interesting if I was successful, now would it? High school was a really strange time for me. High school is a hell of a drug, my dude. I was dealing with a bunch of stuff at the time, like trauma, depression, undiagnosed ADHD, and gender. And thus, I was just this funky amalgamation of gamer, theater kid, and metalhead, and cast a very wide net of acquaintances. Admittedly, I was a bit of a mess and had many various questionable people become monster of the week or recurring characters in the entire picture, including a literal... Oh no! Let's just say there. They're the guys who like to wear the, the uniforms and do the goose-stepping. Who tried to get me to join the cause. Another story, also fuck him. Double fuck him. I agree. A kid I bought weed from that brought a BB gun to school, and this specimen, let's call him Icy Ponybeard. You know, it's kind of funny that I can say weed on this channel without getting in trouble, but I might get in trouble for saying the word. Oh no! Ain't YouTube fun? The Icy Pony Beard, or Foxy as he called himself, was definitely the Fedora type. I don't remember him smelling necessarily, and he had a simple jeans and t-shirt look, but by god, if you saw him coming or had to talk to him, you immediately heard boss music. <laughs> he was really obnoxious, and he was the, well, actually, subgenius. Oh god, the actually. <laughs> Foxy only tangentially is in one of my circles. I was friends with most of the members of our Computer Bowl team, aka the Competitive Coding Squad, and most of my interaction with him revolves around that. Now the facts. Foxy was an avid ICP fan. That's something that I didn't get then, and I still don't to this day. Some flavor of Jesus Lover, a brony, and a furry. He had the same GF for most of high school, which isn't super important behind the skeevy shit that they got caught doing every now and then, like when they caught banging in the bathroom floor. I'm sure if he asked, he'd say it wasn't me. I do like you. <laughs> he also came out as bi at one point and attempted to hit on my one friend, who was the other computer bowl gay person, and it did not go over well. Around that time, Foxy and I shared an art class where the beginning of my personal interaction with him happened. He would mostly draw his fursonas and tried to involve me on multiple occasions. Oh god, the fursonas. He tried to encourage me to make a sona after I humored him. I mixed a paint that was purple and chunky and spattered my feral heart upon the canvas and revealed to him my fursona, the McDonald's Grimace. <laughs> I really like you. <laughs> he was also trying to get into black metal, specifically asked what non-satanic bands I listened to. 
Bruh, how do you even? Me being the asshole I was, I listed off the most grotesque and vile bands I could think of. He stayed away from me after our interactions became mostly high-bye at that point. <laughs> well played. Now the good stuff. His furry and brony interests got much worse junior and senior year. He was a teacher's aide during my intro to coding class in junior year, and infrequently would bring up the assignments on the projector when our teacher had some business to attend to. He frequently used this time to showcase his fursonas and MLP OCs until one day Foxy accidentally brought up furry porn instead of the test program he was trying to show us all in his USB. Oh, honey. He wasn't allowed to aid for the rest of the year, understandably so. The only other real notable thing that happened that year was him practically begging the substitute teacher to help him buy a super expensive fursuit during lunch every day. What? Like, this was the only reason I would stay in the cafeteria during lunch. It was like a freaking opera performance of this sad furry clown lamenting how close and yet so far he was from his dream. The shit really hit the fan when we got to senior year. Firstly, he had an extremely weird polyam relationship with his girlfriend and some dude that went to another school and who explained to literally anyone that would listen about the nasty shit he and his furry BF would get up to and how his vanilla monogamous GF wasn't entirely okay with the situation. Classy. He seemed to lose his respect for boundaries after that, especially with the members of the Computer Bowl team. I was in a coding class with all of them and I saw a bunch of it go down. Foxy would creepily touch my friend, let's call her Katniss, any time that he would move past her. Like he would finger walk across her back when moving past her seat. Dude. He would also tell her friend, Geode, how he wanted to fuck Geode's pony OC. I am gonna walk into the goddamn ocean. Oh my god, I fucking died a little. <laughs> The hitting on of my friend, Computer Bowl Gay, was worsening as well. But the thing that really takes the cake is the day that I entered the classroom and it was dead quiet, but the air, the air was heavy. I tried to ask Katniss and Geode what was up, and they said they weren't allowed to talk about it. I caught up with Computer Bowl Gay at lunch, and he gave me the full story. Foxy had flipped the fuck out at CB practice. He said that he was tired of everyone else bullying him over his sexuality and being a furry. The thing is, they were tired of him being a creep and confronted him. He responded with threatening to beat everyone on the team to death. I'm still not entirely sure how he didn't get expelled, but he definitely got kicked off the team and suspended a month or so until everything cooled down. He kind of kept his head down until graduation and then just kind of disappeared. The last thing I heard from him is when he tried to hook up with another former friend of mine by sending him a really creepy message on Grinder, Something about his doe-eyed stare, if I remember correctly. Oh! Oh my goodness! Love it! Icy Ponybeard, Foxy, I don't know where you are today, but I'm absolutely sure you're still a mess. And we have to end this tale. Thank you all for your time, and thanks, Moonhorse, for everything you do. Have an amazing day slash night slash whenever. Time is an illusion. <laughs>
movie was weird and I didn't finish the book because it was boring. But nostalgic media is a huge thing. However, there are certain parts of my past that cannot be captured by watching reruns of Gundam Wing and Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Though, ostensibly, that does help. It's the cringe. See, I was on the internet and in the furry circles far younger than I ever should have been. Because I had access to internet and I was home for several hours a day by myself. Which, admittedly, led me into some very weird places. And I gotta be honest, I wouldn't say that anybody else should ever do this. But I'm very happy that I did because I learned so much. And now, I can share all of that with you. My exposure to the horrible was basically just training for my future job. <laughs> so, when I hear you all share wonderful stories like these, about the weird people you were in school with, or the weirdos that you knew from specific, like, internet groups and things like that, it brings me joy. It brings me life. <laughs> you know, some of you, I know a lot of you actually, who talked on some of these things, uh, play a lot of like D and D and stuff like that. So you know how, uh, like as a necromancer, you can do that thing where if you're surrounded by like the dead, or like any place like that, it can recharge your mana. You basically kind of recharge your batteries. This is that for me. This is recharging my mana. <laughs> I bask in the cringe and watch the nonsense from the yesteryears wash over. Like, oh dear God, really? The pony thing was a phenomenon. Like some of you may have been too young to realize that. Some of you may not have ever been around that kind of thing, but it was a thing. And it's not surprising that it happened. And the overlap of bronies and furries and neckbeards is massive. There's just a huge collection of all of that together. Oh my goodness. And this guy. This particular foxy. Um... I don't know if you're aware of this, Oopsie, but let me let me let you guys in on a little a little well-known secret. Uh, this is one of those things that like everybody who's ever been in the uh, the furry community will tell you. Like, this is just a thing. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as when I explained uh, the bears. This is something all furries know about, and nobody else outside of it knows about it. Um, so <laughs> when when they started talking about uh, Foxy's more promiscuousness and their inability to, you know, actually abide by a partner and just do whatever they want and kind of just fuck around in general, hit on everything and try to get laid constantly, there's a joke in the furry community that um, people who are foxes, who identify as, as foxes, which I assume this one does given the name, are notorious for being really kind of slutty. So, <laughs> this is, like, super extra that, like, this comes out like this, because it's like, yeah, I realize high school, and high school is a hell of a drug, but, dude, that's a thing that's been around since before I was even a part of this whole community. Like, that started in, like, the 60s, uh, when furry was, like, becoming a thing in the 60s and 70s. That was, like, a, a thing that people would talk about at cons. It's just like, oh, yeah, no, foxes fuck everybody. That's just a thing. Or get fucked. It's just... Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, everybody knows that shit. <laughs> Wolves are edgy tough guys, or aka edgy tough girls. It doesn't matter. Gender is irrelevant. Whatever their gender is, they're usually, like, edgy and angsty. Uh, foxes fuck anything. And then you have, like, the weird others that are in between. Like, you have, like, your your rabbits and things like that that are all... Yeah, foxes also do this, too. But there's a lot of, like, ooh-wooing and shit like that. And... I could never center in any of these groups because every time one of them would start talking, my only thought was, you know, I kind of wish that I could just, like just stagger off into the into the depths, uh, just let the ocean take hold, uh, just drown it out of me. <laughs> I knew people who intentionally did, like unironically, did the whole like cutesy speech that they do, and I was just like, stop it. Get some help. It's... Oh, God. Looking back on it, it's even worse. But I do have to say uh, my other favorite part of this... Uh, there's a lot of favorite parts of this story, let's be honest. I have several. 
Um, I could go on and on about this because your writing style is fantastic and this is really, really funny. I, I like that your, your fursona is the grimace. That sounds like something I would do. <laughs> oh, man. And I, I just love the, the idea of, I want to get into black metal, but I don't want to listen to satanic bands. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Oh my goodness. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did because I I was ecstatic about this. I needed this because the rest of my night's going to be spent recording some other really weird things that are probably going to make me angry. But this made me very, very happy. So thank you so much again, Oopsie, for sending in this story. And thank you all for being here. If you enjoyed this and would like to send me your own strange story to recharge your favorite Uncle Moon Horse so you can keep doing it. <laughs> the weird shit like this it's it's a subreddit r slash moon horse stories that's that's my secret mana pool it's not really a secret because i advertise it in every you know video but whatever <laughs> make sure you like comment subscribe all that good stuff and share videos out i'm pretty sure youtube's not doing that because they hate me and um fuck them uh i have a ko-fi which now has another incredibly stupid ko-fi goal on it if you'd like to just witness that and help me achieve the dumbest possible things I can do that's an option I also have a merch store, there's a new shirt in the merch store right now, which uh, some of you are going to be very happy to see it, it'll bring you joy I still have to work on some other stuff but keep an eye out on that and there's a live stream every Saturday you can be a part of that, and there's also a discord server the links to all that and more are in every video description including this one I don't know what I was phrasing that like, but there it is. Check it out. It's a drop-down thingy under the video. All the stuff's there. Okay. I'm gonna go now. I love you all. Goodbye. <laughs>